There is a possibility of the return of Dericky Wright. If it's a reality, this is huge for the defense. Also, Coach Byington lands his first transfer. Well, let's go, man. Let's go. You are Locked On Bandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Today, we explore the newly active transfer portal. Uh, social media rumors are floating that Dericky Wright might be returning. If so, it's huge for the defense. Mark Byington lands his first commit from the portal, which is Jalen Carey. And also baseball is back on track with the sweep of Mizzou, led most in part by the pitching staff. And Grayson Carter had a massive, massive outing on Thursday. So thanks for making Locked on Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, social media rumors are out there flying around Instagram, to be exact. Um, if you follow CJ Taylor, you would have seen this, but uh, Dericky Wright might be returning to West End. Um, he hit the portal back in November, uh, right after the season, uh, committed in early December to Texas A&M uh, was thought to be a major, major piece for the Aggies. And well, um, I don't know. I don't know where all this is coming from. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's kind of like that Caden Proctor situation. He, he, he may have decided that this was not the right move for him. Maybe NIL has something to do with it. Maybe he got a better offer. I, I don't know what the case is, but, Dericky Wright can and will be a difference maker on this Vanderbilt defense, um, and he's going to be uh, what that defense is looking for as far as versatility. So that is, of course, if this is true, that's what would happen. He can and will be um, if, if he is uh, if he is present. So um, I I love this man. Um, this this gives a little bit of credi- credibility to the fact that Clark Lee is an elite play caller um, and the fact that Clark Lee does have a plan uh, and, and have, has an idea of how he wants to use his talent. Uh, you get Dericky right back in the mix. That's another big safety that could play down in the box that can, that can guard, you know, slot guys, tight ends, things like that can play a massive role in, uh, in coverage. Uh, this would be, outstanding he's a bigger body would be tough against the run and i you know i think clark lee would be would can get extremely creative with what he can do with with the ricky right i mean think about think about the ability that he has i mean think about the plays that he made throughout the season not only in the run game but in the pass game as well i mean you saw that uh one play that really stands out to me is that play against hawaii where uh, they try to throw that fade ball on him. I, I guess Vanderbilt was in man-to-man coverage. He was down deep in the red zone. And he goes up, climbs the ladder, and picks the ball off. And so uh, that play, honestly, that play kind of solidified. And it was early in the season, too. I mean, it it, it kind of set the tone. I don't want to say solidified, but it set the tone for what Dericky Wright was going to bring for the entire season, um, injuries I think uh, played a played a massive part in uh, in stunning his development. But I, you know, I think it's um, you know one of those things where you know it just it just didn't happen for him. Um, but I think there's some you know what what I love here is that you know the reason he left and. The reason he left was because this defense was a mess, honestly. And the reason why um, he left is because he didn't see that he had an identity. He didn't see that um, he was being used the proper way. He didn't see any sort of future for advancement, things like that. Now, one of the things that 
he probably sees and and that you know he's really good friends with CJ Taylor. One of the things that is probably happening is that he sees that okay, well Clark Lee is now calling the plays. Clark Lee kind of knows what to do with all of us, you know, and he kind of knows, all right, I'm going to use these guys to the best of their ability. And so I, I think it's something that he sees and, and, and says, okay, let me go get this. And so I'm, uh, I'm excited if this is the case. Uh, don't know if this is the case. I hope this is the case. Derricky Wright is one of those uh, players that just, you just loved watching him play. He plays hard. He he has all kind of ability. Um, he can be used in deep safety down towards the box. I mean, he's a bigger body, so like run stopping stuff is is kind of immediately what you think of. Um, he is somebody that can that can match the big skill, um, almost blanketing them. Um, he is, uh, you know, he's got the size that you want uh, for one of those box safeties. And partially, like, I think he fits perfectly into what Clark Lee wants to do. I mean, he, he Clark Lee loves to have those outside linebacker types, especially the field guy, the guy that plays to the wide side of the field. He likes to have those guys be extremely versatile. Like, hey, I, we can get we can get to the to the passer. We can affect the run game and if you get a tight end running back or, or kind of like a bigger, bigger slot that comes out, you know, he can cover them or he can play, you know, he can break on the ball and in, in zone coverage, especially quick game. He can, he can kind of rally down to the flats and, and make a play on the ball. So it, it's something that you, you really want to see. It's something that I think you can, you know, you can build upon. And he's, again, he, he's also a, He's also a major leader. He's also somebody that can um, get guys lined up. He's somebody that can kind of rally the troops a little bit, and that's what you need, man. Like that's what this defense needs. They need guys that can that can say, "Hey, you need to get in gear. You need to trust this." You know, he he helps give credibility to guys like C.J. Taylor, uh, Langston Patterson, some of the guys that that stuck around through you know all the I guess all the BS. You know, with what you know, what what this defense was like last year, which much like the offense, I'm not sure what the identity was, and I'm not sure why Clark Lee was so hands off with that. Um, but he's not anymore. And if this rumor is true, it means that a nil is probably factoring into this, and he's probably getting a good deal. Uh, NIL wise, um, probably better than he's probably going to get being committed to Texas A&M. And B, he sees potential. Like Clark Lee's like, hey man, like I'm going to, you know, this is the plan. This is where you would fit in. You should, you should come on back to West End, and uh, we'll uh, we'll make this happen for you. So, um, I, you know, I for one hope this is this is true um, because. I think this is probably the best fit for him because I, I don't I don't know that Texas A&M really kind of knows what to do with him. Clark Lee's seen him, um, so he does know what to do with him. And I, I'm I, I can just see him against let's say uh, South Carolina. Right, you have to beat you know you have to beat South Carolina to go to a bowl game. I can see him making a game game clinching interception and because he's in the right position, not because he's like some overwhelmingly um, major cover guy, but um, he's somebody that's going to just, he's a smart heady player. That's going to be in the right place at the right time. And he's going to benefit from that. He's got great instincts. He's physical. Um, and and he's 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 somebody that you want on this defense leadership wise as well because like I said, he's going to be the guy that that rallies everybody. He's going to be the guy that gets everybody lined up. Him and C.J. Taylor work so well together. They can communicate. They can communicate coverages, tendencies, things like that. These guys would be perfect in the film room. So I love every bit of this. And even though it's just a rumor right now, I love every ounce of this. And none of it may be true. That's okay. I think if it, it, I you know, if there's a little bit of smoke, 
we're going to, we're going to explore if there's a little bit of fire and what that fire would do. Right. And that fire, um, if it is indeed a fire and not just some random smoke of, of a little bitty flame that was stomped out by the notion of he's going to stay at Texas A&M. Um, if this thing is uh, goes from smoke to major fire, that major fire will take this defense to a whole nother level. And I think that would be that would be extremely beneficial to what uh, Clark Lee is trying to do uh, with this defense. And I, I, for one, am excited about that. Um, if that I'm excited about that possibility because this team needs it, right? This team, two and ten, no identity on either either side of the ball, um, no identity really in special teams except for the fact that they had some decent coverage units, um, but no real identity. And that's one of the things Clark Lee wants to do: bring back the identity, make these guys, you know, make these guys. <laughs> understand that hey when you play Vanderbilt it's going to be an all out freaking battle man and that's that's what you got to that's what you got to roll with and that's what uh you know getting Dericky right f- further solidifies that message so um if this is indeed true massive massive news for this defense if not if not true it was fun to explore the possibility in, on April 1st so um and that's not an April Fools hopefully it's not an April Fools it might be who knows? But uh, would love it to be. Uh, would love it to be that. So speaking of transfer portal, this one is not a fugaze. This one is actually uh, actually true. Jalen Carey coming over uh, from James Madison, uh, the first big domino to fall for Coach Byington and Vanderbilt basketball. We'll talk more about that here next. All right. Have you ever had a frustrating ticket buying experience? Um, you know, with opening day of the MLB season, I'm sure if you went and bought tickets, uh, hopefully you had a great experience and hopefully you used game time, right? Because game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Imagine that. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, their lowest price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So here's what I love, man. Here's this, this is my favorite feature here. When you use the app, you have features like customize your spot and supplemental as an in, inspiration. Um, you know, you have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals where like you pick the you you pick the the section and game time picks the seats, you get some deals on that. Uh, but you have uh, priority last minute deals. Save up to sixty. You can save up to sixty percent off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc., etc., etc. You have flash deals. You save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. So those are flash deals. Those things boom pop up uh, almost immediately. Zone deals. That's what I was just talking about. You choose the section. Game time. Choose the seats. Sometimes you can get a discount there. Um, All-in pricing, you can tog- toggling this feature shows you the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout, so you know exactly what you're paying. If it says $33, you're paying $33, and you know it. And there's no absolute, um, there's no absolute uh, surprises. Uh, you get a panoramic view from your seat uh, in the app before you buy, so that's really cool. That's really neat to see kind of what you would see. Uh, if you hover over the seat or if you click on the seat, it brings it pops it up in a separate window. It's really, really cool. Uh, the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game time ticket coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. That's massive. Okay. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Okay. Again, create an account, redeem code, locked on college. That's L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off. Again, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Boom. All right, welcome back. Segment number two. 
All right, welcome back. It is the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. Are you watching Fox Sports or you been on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? We'll make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, um, Mark Byington has been an excellent hire so far. The guy, the energy that the guy brings uh, to the program, to the community, to the university has been outstanding. And it's no surprise he landed his first commit today. Um, or not today, but this weekend. Um, and that commit is Jalen Carey, uh, comes over from James Madison, so no surprise there. Terrence Edwards is probably soon to follow if, I, if, uh, if I'm guessing this thing correctly. So um, one of the things I talked about in this offense is you needed an athletic big man that kind of knows how to meander within this system, uh, the guy that can kind of clean up the boards a little bit too and, and run the floor and just kind of be that big presence down in the paint. You know, not necessarily a traditional center, so to speak, but he's somebody um, at the forward position that's athletic enough uh, to make a difference and, and big enough to kind of have a presence down low. Um, he's 6'8", 245 pounds. He has three years of eligibility. Um, he averaged seven points, 4.3 boards per game. He shot 66.9% from the field. Um, as a freshman, um, he had one of his best games. He scored 13 points in the Sunbelt Championship outing, um, and he was uh, absolutely outstanding. So, um when you look at when you when you look at Kerry and and I saw Kerry most notably in the NCAA tournament. I'll be honest with you, I didn't watch. I don't want to say I didn't watch hardly any. I didn't watch any James Madison basketball until they started playing in the tournament. So uh, one of the things that immediately jumps off the page about about Kerry is his physicality, man. Um, again, like I said, athleticism is uh, also kind of mixed in with that. But I mean, his physicality is, whew, it's just kind of off the charts and. Um, he has some pretty good moves. I mean, he doesn't score a ton, but I, I think where he plays, I think his style of play, he's kind of that just he, he's kind of the guy that's gonna set screens, he's gonna be a presence down low, he's gonna get some boards, he's gonna he's gonna facilitate some things, um, being being kind of like a the second of like a three leg pass um in transition, things like that. I mean, he's just explosive and physical and and you know, you 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 love to see kind of what he can do, get himself to the free throw line, all that stuff. Uh, Van Allen Lubin um, is kind of a similar player. Um, so if you can get Van Allen Lubin, you can kind of get those uh, those twin towers down there, uh, down low, and uh, you know just get somebody that's just going to bring a physical presence down in the paint, which Vanderbilt did not have. Um, and, and Van Allen Lubin uh, developed a little bit, but not quite into what you needed him to be physicality-wise. And so – this is uh, this is outstanding to see. Um, he's going to well. One thing that needs to happen is toughness, physicality. Which, I mean, obviously, the way I just described his game is the way I describe is is the same way he's going to fit in. And I love this man. This is going to be this is going to be outstanding. Like this is what this team needs. This team needs somebody that's just going to go out there and just go boom. You know, somebody that's going to come in, you know, you come into the paint. You don't want to come into the paint when, when Jalen Carey's standing there, right? You, you're you going to get swarmed. He's going to be the first guy on you. Then, then the guards are going to collapse on you. They're going to rip the ball away and throw it in transition. They did. They harassed Wisconsin, right? It just seemed like he was – he's just an intimidating dude down there, you know? I mean, he's only 245 pounds now. I mean, he was once close to 300, which he probably will uh, will end up bulking back up a little bit, you know, as he develops in the strength and conditioning program, put on good weight, things like that. But, you know, it's just – those are things you can't really – toughness and physicality are, are qualities and traits that you can't really put on a stat sheet. So I think if you're going to, like, stat watch this transfer – you're going to be disappointed. You're like if you're going to say, "Oh, well, he's only averaging seven points a game. This is no good. It's not a good transfer. He's not going to score, right?" You're going to have scores. It's just that that's you're going to have people that 
do most of the scoring. If he can chip in with some, with a few boards, a few turnovers, just just being a presence down there and not allowing their guys to rebound, like setting screens, getting guys open, being kind of like the middleman, but you know, in like a give and go, you know, just just some things that he can do to kind of help play his role. He can be, and I, you know, one of my favorite docu series is The Last Dance. So he can be kind of without all the craziness and you know, ex- you know. Be, you know, without all the eccentric personality traits that Dennis Rodman had and all the crazy bipolar stuff that he had going on, but he could kind of play that Dennis Rodman role for this team, that Charles Oakley role uh, that Charles Oakley played for the Knicks um, for many, many years. Uh, you know, so, some of those things like just being that just, you just don't want to go in the paint, <laughs> you know, the Davis twins for the Pacers, you know, those, those, that, that old school, just tough. He's just going to wear you down. You know, he's going to, and he's athletic enough to run with you, which is scary. Um, so he's not just a fixture down in the paint. He's not going to be like a Baycott type guy. He's not going to be like a, a, a Zach Eady uh, for Purdue uh, type, type body where he's just down there and he's just mauling people in the low post. That's not what that's not what Vanderbilt's game is going to be. They're going to run, so they need a big guy, big tough guy that can run because that's what they're going to do. They're going to run. They're going to attack. They're going to slash. They're going to they're going to slash and dish things like that. So he's somebody that can help cr- create space and create opportunities for that. So I'm excited for this transfer. More to come, probably Terrence Edwards. I would I would only imagine he probably won't make a decision until after the NBA draft. Um, so that's going to come in a little while. Um, I don't know if he can commit and sign as a transfer and still wait for the NBA draft. I don't know how all that works. I'll be honest with you. Um, But hopefully Terrence Edwards pops in and uh, provides a little bit of a spark as well. So first big domino, man, this is exciting. Um, Also exciting is the baseball team getting back in the win column, especially the SEC win column. Big monster sweep. Pitching staff was outstanding. We'll talk about that. All right. But first, Amazon Fire TV channels. You want to hear about that? Well, let's make it happen. Because Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. So what is Fire TV channels? How is that different? Well, I'll tell you. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on the latest world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. So to learn more, visit www. Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. All right. Uh, welcome back. Segment number three. Thank you for making locked on Vandy your first listen each and every day. Make sure you uh, make sure you uh, click locked on SEC next to make sure you make them your next listen because uh, Chris Gordy and crew do, do a phenomenal job. Uh, lots of pro day information, uh, lots of spring practices. Uh, well, it seems that Bama has gotten themselves into the final four. So they're going to be talking about that here in a little bit. Maybe Vanderbilt's next. Maybe they can get to the final four. Eventually Georgia looks like they might, they, they might be on track to do really well in the NIT, maybe even win the whole dang thing. Um, so SEC basketball's doing okay, especially if their first, especially after an embarrassing first round of the tournament uh, with some of those teams. But uh, Alabama's made up for it by putting themselves into the Final Four. So Chris Gordy will probably have that, uh, and then also locked on, uh, locked on Alabama as well. So um, 
baseball, right? Uh, the last time we left off, we talked about we talked about Grayson Carter and how big of you know how how big of a deal it was for him to kind of come in because they started the series on Thursday this this week because of Easter, um, but they uh, he comes in and pitches an absolute butte, striking out eleven. We talked about that on Friday's episode. If you want to know more about what I think of Grayson Carter and, and his impact on this pitching staff and the depth of this pitching staff, go check out Friday's show. Um, but the rest of the team on Friday and Saturday followed suit very, very well. Carter Holton, uh, he threw seven innings of and gave up only one run uh, on Friday. Uh, Davis Diaz, uh, you know, had three, R, you know, drove in three runs. Uh, and they beat Missouri three to one um, on Saturday. That was that was absolutely outstanding. Um, you know, Carter Holton just continues uh, to deal from uh, from the Saturday spot. Man, it's been it's been awesome to see. Uh, Brandon Cyber is kind of settling into that closer role. You're starting to see his name uh, pop up more and more. Uh, Holton, uh, more stats on him. He struck out eight, walked only one. Uh, he had 102 pitches. Um, and he is four and zero uh, on the season, and uh, Vandy is uh, twenty three and six, six and three in the conference. They've they've been they're winners of four straight, which is uh, very streaky. If you really if you really must know, um, but Miller Green is somebody that's starting to kind of he's a lefty. Some about Tim Corbin and left-handed pitching has been really, really good. But, uh, you know, pitching, you know, the point is pitching is the story here, right? Because the bats are very inconsistent. And, you know, and I, I was on social media and I was, I was reading some things in a post from Aria Garrison uh, of the, uh, of the Tennessee who covers all the Fandy stuff. Uh, she made a really good point. I want to give her props for this, but she made a really good point as far as like why you see so many, um, you know why you see so many hitters that are not consistent, right? It's because the consistent the the consistent hitters and she the way she put it was the high ceiling high floor hitters are getting drafted out of high school and going to the majors or going to MLB and you know kicking around in the minors for a little bit and and before moving on up. Um, so you have to like. So in college, you're kind of left with these guys that you kind of have to take a chance on. You either get a high floor guy who's going to be remarkably consistent but never be a superstar. They're just going to kind of hit and be good, uh, which you know you, you need some guys like that in your lineup. Or you're going to get some like high ceiling guys, uh, but those high ceiling guys are also going to have low floors. So like you're going to have you're going to have to deal with some inconsistency there, like. Like especially these power hitters, like you're gonna have to deal with the guy going 0 for four with four strikeouts, and then the next night he's three for four with a double, a homer, and a single, and driving in six runs. Like you're gonna have to kind of, you're gonna have to kind of deal with those ebbs and flows a little bit, and that's kind of where pitching comes into play because pitching, there's a lot of good pitching, and pitching can be developed into a more consistent, um, more consistent performances, uh, even more so than hitting because. It's because pitchers dictate a lot of what happens throughout the game as far as their command and things like that. And so, so you get a little bit more guys uh, coming in as pitchers because, you know, major league pitchers, you really kind of have, if you're going to, if you're going to make it as a pitcher in the MLB, you really have to, you really have to have your ceiling match or floor and both be extremely high. Right. Um, because there's a mat, there's like a razor's edge difference of a really good, almost elite college pitcher and and elite major league arm. There's a massive difference between those two things. Um, but the fine line of like those guys that I don't know. It, it's it's one of those things. It's hard to kind of it's harder to kind of predict pitching, and it's easy to kind of like say, okay, well with nil, I'm just going to go to college. Like a lot more pitchers are probably saying, "Hey, with NIL, I'm going to go to college." Um, whereas, like, I might get drafted in the fourth round, spend like six years in Double A baseball. Which, if you spent four years in college baseball, it's I don't want to say it's the same thing because one's metal, one's wood, but like, it ain't far off. And so, 
Um, you're starting to see that a little bit. So pitching can bail out. My point is pitching can bail out hitting. So um, it's good to see that Vanderbilt is developing those pitchers, especially the lefties, because the lefties are extremely valuable. If they can keep some of these guys healthy, I think they've found a really good bullpen now, and I think they've got some some things in the works. But there's a lot of a lot of great things about this baseball team, and we'll we'll touch more on to on tomorrow's episode as to why I think the South Carolina series was a blip in the radar versus a trend and why I wasn't worried about it and why these guys are starting to kind of develop a little bit. So we'll talk about more of that um, as we go um, and how this pitching staff can really kind of elevate the level of play and really kind of bridge the gap between um, the hitters having an off night versus the hitters being on fire, which it seems to kind of happen to each, each series. Um, so uh, that's going to do it for us on this episode, at least. Well, we hope you had a great Easter. Welcome back. Uh, it's already April. Jeez. I'm going to knock on some wood now, um, but it's already April. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch you back here April 2nd. Uh, hopefully you don't fall for any uh, massive April fool's jokes. So uh, we'll talk to you later. We'll see you back here tomorrow, but until then, as always, anchor down.